Okay, so we're going to be installing SQL Server, uh, setting up SQL Server, and um, we're going to install it, and then we're going to back it up, or not back it up. We're just going to install it right on uh, on on Commvault. So first things first, we need actual SQL Server, right? So let's head over to uh, Com uh, Google, type in SQL Server 2014 or whatever. Let's change our search actually to SQL Server 2014 download ISO. The first one, uh, this is the URL, you know, Microsoft.com slash ENGB eval center. Right click on it and open a new tab. So click, when you click on that new tab, it's just kind of what it looks like right here. It's evaluation center. So we're going to scroll down until we have the SQL Server 2014 service pack 2. Click on ISO, we're going to click um, continue, and you're going to put in your information in and continue, and it's going to allow you to uh, download the ISO file. So once you have the ISO file, you install it in your your browser, right, your, your data store, or wherever, for that matter, browser. I'm sorry, not browser, data store, excuse me, in your data store on your ESXi host. And ours is right here, SQL Server 2014, right there. So so we know it's here. So now let's go to our ComServe. So we're at the ComServe now. So we're going to go ahead and, we're gonna, you know, we have the SQL, SQL instance installed. So let's double click on the actual file. Okay, we're going to uh, start by clicking on installation. And new SQL Server standalone installation. Okay, we're gonna uh, see where SQL Server is set up. We're just gonna push uh, next. We're not gonna do the update check. Okay, it's gonna run through its um, setup file. You'll notice that we already have a um, installation here of Commvault, the the server, right? So we're gonna do a new installation of 2014 uh, server. Actually, push next. We're going to do the um, free, we're going to specify the free edition next. So we're going to do the accept license terms and we're not going to turn on the um, customer experience though. So we're going to click um, accept license terms and click next. Okay, we're going to install all the features actually. We're going to select all. So we're going to select all and then uh, push next. So we're, so we're going to create a uh, name instance called uh, Com Comvault um, SQL DB. And then when you push tab or click another thing, it should put it in there. Well, maybe you want to push next. Yeah, there you go. Um, so we're going to push next out of that. We're into the next one. Okay, we're going to change the SQL agent to automatic. And the history replay, we're going to leave those in manual. That way they don't start, actually. These two right here, right here, uh, this one, and well, yeah, these two, we're going to set those, leave those in manual, and uh, we're going to push next. Here's where you actually put in um, a critical piece, changes to mix mode. The reason you change to mix mode is so you can access it via local admin or a um, domain admin, basically, or a network uh, account. So we're going to add the current user and we're going to add a uh, domain admin. So we just put those domain admin and our local um, admin in there. Let's push next. So we're going to just uh, add the current user. Okay, uh, push next. We're going to um, install the reporting native. Uh, just going to install it only, not configure. And then install only the uh, SharePoint uh, module and push next. Okay, distributed relay controller. We're going to just add the current user and next. So we're going to leave the controller group name as blank and then push uh, next. Okay, so we're ready to install SQL Server. We'll just uh, highlight, um, just take a look at the configuration path and uh, we'll just click on install. So as we can see now, you have the Commvault SQL DB there listed actually. So that's a good sign. The services are starting to come together. 
Uh, it's not being done installing, but the services are starting to come together. That's a good. That's good. Okay, as you can see, everything has been installed successfully. And let's just scroll down real quick here, and we see everything has been installed. No failures of any sort. That's good. That's a good sign. And let's take it our take a look at our services. Okay, good. We see that the Commvault one is done. Let's refresh it. That's great. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah, so fantastic. Let's let's log into the actual um, database. Let's see. Let's log into this guy right here. So in order to do that, we go to start. But before we do that, let's let's just close this out. Let's close him because he's successful. So everything is happy there. We can leave this open just in case we need to um, restart a service. Okay, so we got 12 new apps installed. You're gonna find the SQL. So we're looking for the um, SQL. SQL Server Manager Studio, right? Yeah, that one right there, I think. Yeah, right, let's click on that. So the SQL Server Studio Manager is a way to interact with the database. Um, I know in Oracle, you can do it two ways. SQL, well, I know also no MySQL, you can do it the same way where you can interact with the command line. And Oracle, you can interact with the command line as far as GUI, same with MySQL. And this is probably the same thing. Well, I've never really interacted with the uh, MySQL, or rather SQL Server from Microsoft via the command line, but I'm sure it can be done. I'm sure, it's, I'm sure that's, but anyway, this inter allows us to interact with the database so we can edit, edit the tables and um, create data in the table. Okay, um, so obviously, you know, I mentioned the earlier, you have a couple of different ways to log into it. One being the, well, the Windows authentication, and one being the SQL authentication. In order to change it, you can just change it here. Yeah, SQL, we're not gonna do SQL, we're gonna do Windows. Make sure it works, right? Um, so database engine, right, this is the, so if you have more than one database, by the way, you can also click here and it'll, maybe not, maybe I have had more databases, but anyway, um, at any rate, uh, oh wait, here we go, the computer's a little slow, yeah, you see that right there, so we're not going to log in the combo one, we're going to log in the SQL one, that's the one we created, so we're going to click on connect, and this will allow us to go into the the database, or to see it, if you will. We're gonna just, um, we're just gonna add a couple things, really, check it out, and we're gonna. What we're, what we are gonna do actually, in here, um, is lower the amount of memory that you it uses. I believe I've done that already, but I just want to double check to see if it's. Uh, I'm sure I did it already in the previous videos, but I just want to make sure it's. Uh, it's it's still. I uh, just want to make sure I did it. So these are your, this is your database. This is um, SQL Server database. Here is your login. So click on security and it'll tell you your login, your roles, who can log in. See this essay right here? This is very important by the way. Whenever you install SQL, like I said, um, that's your, you're not going to know the username for your your um, default admin, right? But it's SA is the username, by the way. So just so you know, um, if you need to if you need to log into it, if you ever get locked locked out, that's what you know. So it's the password you set up, and then SA is the username that you would you would log in as. So let's do this. Let's right click on it, and we're going to set the memory, I'm going to lower the memory down to a lot, <laughs> meaning 
if it's like two gig or something, I'm gonna put that puppy down like 128 meg or something really, really small like that because I don't I don't want the, the database to get crazy and use a bunch of memory. So we're gonna click on memory. So as you can see, right, maximum allowed. So minimum server memory is zero meg. Maximum server memory is a bunch, a lot. So I'm going to do 128 meg is what I'm going to do, megahertz. And other memory options, so I'm going to leave that like that. But that's um, that's critical right here. If you have a SQL server that's just like, why is it so slow? Man, you know? Um, if you're not running a lot of stuff on well, we aren't. It's a development environment. So, yeah, we'll just limit it so it doesn't go crazy. Go crazy, folks. Um, okay, so then anyway, the, that's memory. Take care of that. Click on processors. So we're going to set the what maximum to one. Maximum workers thread to one. Okay. And then we're going to um, yeah, click OK. So there's one more thing I want to do while I'm in here actually is to Click on the domain admins group here. Go to properties. Okay, it's not checked. Good. I was looking for the enforce password policy. So I'll cancel this. And then I'll go over to my backup. Right click on him. Go to properties. Okay, that's good. It's not. Um, I'm looking to uncheck enforce policy password. That's what I'm looking to check, and obviously it's not here either. So I'm gonna push cancel. Then I'm gonna go to SA, my SA username here. Right click on him, and go to properties. Okay. I want to do this. I want to uncheck this. Enforce password policy. Say my, say I have logged into my my SQL server in I don't know a couple months, right? Really, I need to uncheck both of these because uh, otherwise it'll lock me out. Because after so many days, let's say it, oh, you need to change the password or whatever. Nope, sorry, don't enforce it. So that's that's another critical piece right there. If you ever have a, if you don't have a, if you don't set up SQL. At, on the on the domain, and you set it up as a regular account, just a local account. That's one thing check, uncheck right there, so that you can always get into it. And yeah, so what we did is we unchecked it, the enforce password policy, and push OK. So that'll set the change. So that's it. Um, that concludes this tutorial on how to set up um, SQL Server in preparation for a SQL agent on Commodore. If you like this video and you want to see more, please jump on to my course, which is I have two courses. One is at getajobnit.teachable.com and the other course is on Udemy. It's learn backup and restore with Commodore, get a high paying job. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just type in Gary McNeely or Commvault Whisperer. There's some good content there related to this. If you would, could you click on the subscribe button and click on notifications? Thank you very much.